Let's be real guys, most of us in our 20s are stupid. We make a lot of stupid mistakes, we waste a lot of time, and more than anything, what happens is that we end up not living our lives deliberately, consciously, in a direction we want to go in. And then we reach the end of our 20s, and all of a sudden we're like, crap, I don't really know why I'm here, and what I'm doing, and what's going on. So in this video, I want to share five more mistakes I made in my 20s, that now, upon further reflection, I think will help you the most. What's up guys, Alex Hine, author of the book Master the Day. Now, one of the things that made the biggest difference in my 20s that I used massively was journaling. It was journaling that I used as the core exercise to figure out and clarify really what I was going to do with my life. What did I want in the kind of women that I dated? What did I want from my career? What did I want from my life? So I've included actually some of the core journaling exercises that have changed my life. It's an e-course. It's the first link in the description. You can click to download that free. So that'll give you some of the exercises I worked on myself. Now, the first mistake in my mind is the mistake of drifting. And I see this more than anything being a big flaw in the way that we tend to live our lives, especially in our 20s when we think, I'm young, I have time, I've got all the time in the world. It's not true. When I moved back from China, I was 24, I think. And when I got back, I honestly was really depressed. I was super miserable, so I didn't really care like what I got. In other words, I got the first job that I could get. That was a good job. I didn't really care when I was dating a girl if it was going anywhere because right now I just wanted something to kind of fill the time. I was 23. I wasn't even sure if I wanted a real relationship. I was bummed out about life anyway. So I had all these things that I just wanted to fill my day. And that's fine if you're super happy and fulfilled and all the quadrants of your life are where you want them to be. But in reality, I was letting myself drift. I took a job and I ended up in jobs for three years that were wasting my time. The money wasn't even worth it. Because what I was missing was the opportunity to discover what I truly was interested in, what I was truly passionate about, the direction I truly wanted to go in. That was the downside. I also missed the opportunity to really reflect on all the other parts of my life, like what I wanted, what did I actually want in a girl that I dated, what are the flaws I had to work on. And so for me, the main thing I needed to remedy that was to be more deliberate and think and reflect on what I really wanted and let that inform my choices. The second mistake is valuing money over growth, especially of skills. Now, when I was 22, I got a decent job out of college and it was pretty good pay. I was making like 45 grand. I was only working nine to three because it was a teaching job. It was easy. Half the day, I didn't even have class. So I was like nine to three, great pay. I lived at home. I mean, I saved $15,000 cash. That's what I moved to Asia with. And the problem, though, is that at the same time, I had a lot of friends that were getting these really high-paying jobs because they picked money first. And so they were making 60, 70, 80K before 25. And I was super jealous. But the thing was, they very often did not choose work they were interested in or work they really wanted to get good at because they didn't really care that much. And so now, almost 10 years later, I've been out of college. And now I've gone through 15, 20 different jobs Many of them are in the same job or on their second job. And maybe they earned a lot in their early 20s and maybe it's gone up a little bit. But maybe they went from like 60K to 72K. And now in the meantime, not only am I doing my absolute passion where there isn't a billion dollars that would fall in my lap and I would just retire. Not only do I love my work and it makes an impact on the world that I get to see from you guys every day, but my income has gone up every single year. And it's gone up dramatically, especially as I've been an entrepreneur. And so I see so many people playing the short run, the short game, and then they max out at 30 or in their early 30s. But more importantly, they're not happy and they're not fulfilled. So don't make the mistake of choosing pay in a job over growth and learning. Because either way, if you're getting a job that you are interested in, you will enjoy the work. And if you focus on growth and learning, you will far out earn all your friends getting high paying jobs. But it may take you five or 10 years. The third mistake is something I think will inspire you. And it's the mistake of thinking that life will never get better. You know, my early 20s, I was always the dude that got dumped. All right, always. And 
I remember the first time I got dumped by a girl I really liked. I think I was in my late teens. The first time I was like really into a girl and for at least like a moment in time, she was into me. And when it ended and when I got dumped, I was in this awful mood for a while. And I remember thinking consistently, I'll never find someone that good again. A girl that attractive, that smart, that fun, whatever. But sure enough, when I first got into my real mutually loving long-term relationship at 25, that girl was much better. And the same thing happened, you know, when I got laid off my first job. I had all this time, all this money. And then when they were like, hey, what are your plans this summer? And I was moving to China. And they were like, great, because you wouldn't have a job anyway. You know, I was like, oh man, maybe I'm never going to find a job that easy and enjoyable again with pretty good pay. But sure enough, here I am as a YouTuber and an author, and my pay is much better and much more fulfilling. And I would do this even if it were not paying me. And so we think with people, with breakups, with work, with a parent dies or a friend dies, and we think, Life will never get better. I'll never find that again. It's I cannot ever make that happen. It was like a once in a lifetime experience. But it's usually not true. Everything's going to be okay. And that's the thing that's hard to always see in the moment. But it almost always has been true in my life. Because if you constantly reflect, you self-improve, and you figure out how to make your life better, It will almost always get better, guaranteed. The fourth mistake is the mistake of making the same mistakes. So I don't for a second believe that with age comes wisdom. Because if that were true, then no one over the age of 70 would have issues with their health, their weight, their relationships, their financial life. And so we have these things that are recurring themes in our life. We struggle with our health or our weight for decades which means maybe we haven't really learned enough about ourselves, and then put that into action. We struggle with overspending and debt for decades, which means we have not learned the lesson and then changed our behavior. We struggle with dating the same people with red flags that ruin our lives. And yet, if that's happening five times, we haven't learned the lesson, we haven't reflected, we haven't changed our behavior and our habits. So for me, the solution has always been to make sure I'm not making the same mistakes more than a few times. That doomsday document I talked to you guys about, where if I have the problem in my life twice, to try and make sure it doesn't happen a third time, I write down everything about it, including stories and anecdotes from my life. You know, I dated a really messed up girl once, and from that experience, I put together a long ass document on red flags and dating. These are the things that you saw, but you did not know what they were. Your intuition felt this. If you see these, run. Just teleport in the opposite direction. But you can do that for your finances. What were my financial flaws? Oh, I leased an expensive car when I didn't have that much money. I took on business debt. I whatever. Put those, put your actual mistakes in one document related to that aspect of your life. Dating, finances, or fitness so that you have something for the rest of your life to reflect upon. Now finally, the last mistake is the mistake of praying and wishing and wanting without doing anything about it. We have this, this is a weird era in the world of law of attraction and manifesting, which all people have known about since the dawn of time, but I don't think until The Secret did people really think that wishing would help you lose 30 pounds, or praying would cause you to get a raise in your job while still doing shitty level work. You know, there is no world where you can wish without doing and lose 50 pounds. That you can pray without doing and get a $30,000 raise while still doing C-level work, $30,000 a year work. This is delusion. And I think it's so tempting to want to wish and pray and hope it goes away, but it doesn't by itself. It's the dual-edged nature. You have to want those things, but you also have to do. Good luck praying and using the law of attraction to get a raise while still doing work that does not deserve a raise, right? Yes, magic happens, and yes, these amazing opportunities may just show up, but don't fool yourself into thinking that I just do the belief stuff, nothing changes externally, and my life will all be a paradise. I don't want you to have to get stuck in the same situations I did where I thought that just by praying and wishing and wanting alone, everything would be good. Always try to change your habits specifically first. So I hope those five reflections help you guys. Again, for me, the way that I helped reflect the most 
was by going through journaling exercises. And again, I've included that first link right there in the description. You can also check out my last two videos right there and right there. You know, I'm often asked, what was the number one thing that I used to change my life? What was the thing I used to figure my life out and get my crap together? What was the thing that I used to organize my goals or to study personal development and get in the best shape of my life and stay in the best shape of my life? What was it that I used to help me clarify what I wanted in my career or what my passion was, what my calling in life was? And what was the thing that allowed me to build a business that's now my full-time living with hundreds of thousands of followers and millions of views? Well, that one thing, that practice is journaling. You know, journaling is what helped me clarify not only what I wanted from life, but turning that into core, clear action steps to find my passion and write books and create this kind of incredible audience. It was the thing that helped me clarify specifically what I wanted and the crystal clear roadmap in order to get there. And I've put together a free download and a journaling email series that you can get by going to the first link right in the description or successjournalingcourse.com.